it's 11 p.m. and these are the headlines. President of the Republic gives 48 hours to solve the problem of fluctuation in the supply of drinking water while he chairs a meeting of the Council of Ministers. The President of the Republic orders the government to open the way for startups to benefit from public projects and to accelerate the opening of regional agencies for the follow up. Constantine, the new railway line is finally operational. A measure is taken following the supplementary development program for the Hanshla province. And the Minister of Foreign Affairs confirms from Seoul the African Korean consensus on improving bilateral partnership while underlying the importance of adopting the principle of an Africa capable of building its present and future. Education over 800,000 candidates to take middle school certificate exam as of Monday at 3,040 examination centers. Welcome back, everyone. Today, the President of the Republic, Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Minister of National Defense, Abdul Majid Tiburun, chaired a meeting of the Council of Ministers devoted to presentations relating to the financing of startups, measures, and provisions to reduce time for the port passage of important goods, and the monitoring of the progress of the sea water desalination plant project in Tizi Wuzu province. Rani Al Bahri with a full statement released by the Presidency of the Republic. The President of the Republic instructed the High Commissioner for Digitization to create a group of design offices specialized in monitoring the project to create the National Data Bank Data Center. Concerning the measures taken to reduce transit times for imported goods through ports, the government was responsible for preparing a global vision of new strategy of port management, which will be presented to the Council of Ministers as soon as possible. The President of the Republic also ordered the Minister of Transport to exercise greater caution and vigilance against any form of manipulation, particularly with regard to slowness in the control of containers, emphasizing the need to respect cargo and loading dates by strengthening the capacities and control systems in order to free up the activity of dry ports. The President of the Republic also ordered the establishment of coordination mechanism to manage the pressure resulting from waiting times at sea, which will be reduced to a maximum period of 24 hours. The head of state instructed the reduction of pressure on the port of Algiers in agreement with the commercial maritime agencies by directing a percentage of commercial maritime traffic to the rest of the country's ports. Concerning the financing of startups, the President of the Republic welcomed the policy followed in the area, affirming that the state will continue to support these young people who represent the new generation of entrepreneurs. Regarding the financing of startups, the President of the Republic ordered the government to open more possibilities to these companies in order to allow them to benefit from public projects and to fight against the financial obstacles discouraging them in the realization of their projects. The President of the Republic also instructed the Minister of the Sector to put in place all measures and facilitation for the benefit of project leaders, who are the pride of Algeria at the national, continental and international level, and to listen to their concerns. Concerning the realization of the project of the seawater desalination station of Temet Daugmun in Tiziwuzu province, the Council of Ministers approved the construction of this station in the Iflisan municipality on condition that the technical studies are in depth and particularly with regard to energy supply. For the supply of drinking water for Tiaret province, the President of the Republic ordered the Minister of Interior to develop an urgent and exceptional program immediately after the 
consent of the Council of Ministers to be submitted at the latest within 48 hours to resolve the problem in the supply of drinking water to the population of Tiaret province by carrying out a project to transfer water from Shatashergi Dam over a distance of 42 kilometers. The work is currently in progress. President Tibun gave strict instructions to strengthen the construction sites and complete the project within a period not exceeding 20 days. The head of state ordered the implementation of Grand Water Transfer Project in El Jermaya region in order to strengthen the supply of drinking water in the eastern part of Tiaret province. Concerning the planned export of Algerian product, the President of the Republic ordered the development of an integrated strategy encompassing all stages of export of Algerian products, particularly with the increase in the number of operators active in the field. And 48 hours only is the deadline given by the President of the Republic to solve the problem of fluctuations in the supply of drinking water in the province of Tiaret through an urgent and special program to complete the water diversion project started from Shatla Sharqi region spreading all over 24 kilometers. For that part, the citizens of the province widely welcomed this news. We salute and appreciate this decision taken by the President of the Republic. As inhabitants of Tiaret, we need solutions like this. This decision is a real support for us. We salute the President of the Republic and we are waiting for the implementation of the plan. We thank the President for taking this decision. We're expecting drinking water in the next 20 days. The authorities are working to resolve this huge crisis. We want the president's decision to be implemented as soon as possible. It's a good decision for the inhabitants of Tiaret. We appreciate the quick response because the crisis is huge. And in northern news, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the National Community Abroad, Ahmed Attaf, took part in the preparatory meeting for the Africa-Korea Summit slated for the 4th and 5th of June in Seoul. Co-chaired by Mauritania and the Republic of Korea, the meeting focused on the most important conclusions to be reached at the summit, notably the strengthening of the Africa-Korea partnership and its various political, economic, social and cultural dimensions. In his speech, Ahmed Attaf welcomed the chair desire for the two parties, Africa and Korea, to raise this partnership to the highest level and also to the initiatives proposed by the Republic of Korea with a view to structuring its cooperation with the states of the African continent and allowing the importance of adopting the principle of an Africa capable of building its present and future, taking into account the particular circumstances facing the countries and peoples of the continent, in addition to supporting the development solutions arising from the African Union's Agenda 2063. Now let's have a listen to the statement made by the Algerian Foreign Minister Ahmed Attaf. I salute the joint will of the two African and Korean parties to raise their partnership to this high level by holding this summit which reflects our attachment to this partnership that has existed for almost two decades. We are satisfied with the results achieved within this framework, and I would like to take this opportunity to salute the joint project's draft, especially the final community project, with all its perspectives and proposals, which define the aspects of complementarity and cooperation projects in various fields, namely economic, political, social, and cultural. On the sidelines of the meeting, Ahmed Attaf had talks with his Mauritanian counterpart, Mohamed Salim Wildemarzouk, 
who, whose country is co-chairing the summit with the Republic of Korea in its capacity as current chair of the African Union. The two parties discussed the most important issues on the summit agenda as they exchange views on continental and regional developments. Another news, Hanshla Willenbaki, Umenbaki Constantine new railway line is finally operational. This long-awaited line has been welcomed by all passengers as part of the supplementarity development program for the Hanshla province. This new transport service has led to significant improvement in service quality. Nurdin Abbasa and Manal Mafa. It's almost 5 a.m., just a few minutes before the departure of the first train service from Khenshla to Constantine province. As you may have guessed, we are at the new Khenshla train station. No sooner was it inaugurated than this much anticipated new line was launched, allowing the residents of Khenshla to reach the city of suspended bridges in just three hours. Yesterday there was the first train departure to Ain al Bayda and today to Kastantin. This will help to open up the Khenshla province. The ticket price is very affordable. This new station is a valuable addition to the region and the country. For 280 dinars, passengers can enjoy all the amenities and comfort that train travel offers covering 51 kilometers and passing through 13 stations. The evening departure from Khenshla is scheduled for 4 p.m. This morning journey begins at 5 a.m. heading to Constantine. The Khenshla Constantine ticket will cost 280 dinars. Previously, we had to travel to Constantine by cars or bus. Today, the journey is quicker and easier, with the train offering a highly appreciated alternative. It is a real boon for any traveler wanting to make the Khenshla Constantine journey, avoiding the inconveniences associated with car or bus travel. In order to facilitate the transport of passengers to and from the train station, the transportation department has provided two buses per day from the city's bus station. Vital due to its socio-economic dimensions, this new railway line will contribute to fostering a new dynamic for development in the whole region. Now let's move on to middle school certificate exam. More than 800,000 pupils will be expected tomorrow morning across 3,040 exam centers dedicated for this middle school final test. Strict measures are taken for the smooth running of this exam, as reported by Yasin Hamdi. More than 818,000 free and schooled candidates will attend tomorrow the middle school certificate exam, including 1,356 candidates with specific needs, 552 from the nation Senate, and 5,003 from rehabilitation centers. During three days, the candidates taking part to this exam will be tested in 10 subjects related to the courses taught face-to-face -face in the school year. The same organizational arrangements of the previous years were maintained. The candidates will be able to choose between two topics for each exam, and the 3,040 exam centers mobilized in the whole national territory will be open at least one hour before the beginning of the tests. The candidates won't be allowed to use any communication device and will have to let their personal belongings in a special room as soon as they enter the center. They also have to attend the exam centers at least 30 minutes before the beginning of the tests. It is strictly prohibited to leave the exam rooms after opening the envelopes containing the topics. The candidates will be able to leave only after spending half of the time allotted for the test. All right, best of luck for our pupils. Wish and success to everyone. And today, the Tourism and Travel International Exhibition in Suffolk has concluded its 23rd edition. The event successfully met its goals of fostering the Algerian tourism and African networking by dedicating a whole space for the Algerian handcrafts and hosting an important number of African countries. Our reporter Saida Mayouf came with the following, taken up by Najah Tayyar. The 23rd edition of the Tourism and Travel Fair and as always has devoted a space for the continent traditional crafts and being an inseparable part of the Algerian tourism, a complete pavilion was dedicated to the Algerian handcrafts. 
de Coldplay de Pierre Pissius. Semi-precious stones is a cooperation project between Brazil and Algeria. It's located in Tamnagasset. We're specialized in stone cutting, craft cutting, lapidary work, design, 3D design, and manual design. Le design manuel. We specialize in cutting coral stones. Here we've had a lot of exchange of experience between national and international craftsmen to promote this ancestral coral jewels making. Other than the Algerian traditional handcrafts, handcrafts from all over Africa were also gracefully displayed. You shouldn't give a craftsman money but space where he can display his art. We ask Algeria to keep organizing similar events. It's very interesting. I have been here for four days. The organization is amazing. The people and the ambience are amazing too. This exhibition is a success. It's good that the tourism fair is back before the summer season so that the citizens can discover our facilities what do we expect from them and what do they expect from us? We notice that each year this fair progresses even more. This fair, being one of Algeria's flagship events, also as it came in the start of the summer season, it has been an irreplaceable opportunity to promote Algeria as a splendid tourist destination. Let's dive now to Tipaza province to discover a mesmerizing touristic site. The Tipaza village called Sat before is perfect for the summer vacations. This touristic complex has been renovated while keeping its character that made it well known among Algerians. Saida Mayouf once again with a report, but this time taken up by Rani al -Bahri. The Tipaza tourist village complex proudly showing off its white walls and its blue shutter color of the ocean. With its Aleppo pin forest spread over around 10 hectares, many visitors are completely mesmerized. I came from Belgium. It's been seven years since I didn't come to Algeria. I am from Netrama. It was my dream to visit Tipasa, the pleasant and friendly town. I came from Lyon. It's been 35 years since I didn't come to my country. I'm very happy to be here. This is a magnificent place. It's a truly paradise on earth. I came from Tizi Wuzu to do a photo shoot, so it's really a heavenly place which makes me think of Greek architecture and everything I find. The beach is super clean. An architectural jewel where the imprint of the famous architect Fernand Pouillon is present. This village today is getting ready to receive tourists searching for tranquility. We renovated the complex recently. This letter is made up of 210 bungalows, two swimming pools, four restaurants, green spaces and sports fields. The complex is in the process of preparing discounts in favor of Algerian nationals for the promotion of the Algeria destination. Across its entire coastline, mainly 49 beaches authorized for swimming, we are preparing to receive the maximum number of summer visitors in terms of structural reinforcement. So we will have a new hotel in the town of Shershed. The structure will strengthen the capacity. Also, we will have a new guest house in the town of Dwouda with a restaurant. We also insist on expanding the formula of homestay accommodation, which is at the level of the Tipaza province. Tipaza province remains one of the most popular regions during the summer season, where millions of visitors from the four corners of the country and even abroad make a stop over. On Sunday, members of the Higher Youth Council attended a training workshop on the constitutional and legal framework for the presidential elections. The training was provided by representatives of the Independent National Electoral Authority and those of the Constitutional Court. The workshop focused on the administrative and legal procedures for the electoral process. And as part of the humanitarian missions carried out by Naval Forces units to save lives at sea, today at 8.30 a.m., the Regional Center for Sea Surveillance and Rescue Operations in the 1st Military Region 
received a distress call from a vessel called Tanaro River flying the Panama flag coming from Almeria in Spain and heading to Turkey. It was three nautical miles west of Buzerial with an Azerbaijan national on board experiencing severe breathing difficulties and suffering from high blood pressure. In coordination with the National Center for Civilians and Rescue Operations belonging to the National Coast Guard Service of the Naval Forces Command, the operation to rescue and evacuate the sailor was activated, involving AS-12 search and rescue helicopter, and it was able to rescue and evacuate the sailor to the public hospital in Ziralda for medical treatment. This operation confirms the constant willingness for the naval forces to intervene at sea to save human lives in all circumstances. And in Gaza, the death toll of the Zion's genocidal aggression exceeds the 36,000, with more than 82,000 injured since October 7th. While attacks are still occurring, the health system is failing to cover the huge number of injured. A case in point, the Algerian Field Hospital in Khan Yunus, one of the most affected cities by the Zion's daily aggression. Our correspondent in Gaza, Usama Bouzaid, visited the hospital and came with the following commentary of Manamav. After 240 days of genocidal acts and massive destruction perpetrated by the Zionist occupation forces in Gaza, the healthcare system has nearly collapsed. The population, heavily affected by incessant bombings, suffers from famine and epidemics and is in dire need of medical aid. An Algerian field hospital has been set up in the Khan Yunis region in order to provide essential emergency care to the significant influx of displaced people. In the Algerian Field Hospital, Boumedien El Tlemsani, in cooperation with the Belsam Surgeons Union, we are doing our best to alleviate the suffering of our people by providing them with necessary medical care and medications. They are numerous, desperate, and in search of any help to relieve their suffering. Coming here to this field hospital, where general medical consultations and emergency care are provided. We receive more than 400 patients daily, providing them with consultations in general medicine and various specialties, including neurology and dermatology. Every day, this hospital accommodates a constant flow of injured people, regardless of the severity of their condition. The medical teams strive to offer appropriate care to the best of their abilities. The majority of cases are due to the spread of infectious diseases in overcrowded areas and non potable water. These epidemics have affected many children, causing their deaths. We cannot live here anymore. I would like to thank the Algerian people and the President of the Republic for all the help provided to establish this field hospital. The Algerian government has always supported the Palestinian people. In addition to being one of the first countries to send aid to our Palestinian brothers, Algeria is actively committed to reducing the suffering of these people, brutalized by Zionist barbarity, by working diligently on the international stage to achieve a lasting ceasefire. Now that was it for today's news. Thank you so much for our channel. See you soon.